And we are back for a final show at the Orcon. And I'm here with uh, Professor Lessing from Harvard, uh, who just gave a uh, talk on the intellectual property. Uh, Professor, can you maybe, for the viewers who are not here today, just a small overview of uh, your talk? Well, I, I think my talk was really about uh, the need to understand how to organize to fight against the issues which this group has been fighting against, and to recognize that the interests on the other side have all the money in the world, and they are going to continue to fight for their position long after people on our side get tired of the battle. Um, so that what we need to do is to, I said three things. Number one, um, encourage better understanding of the underlying issue. So in the area of copyright, stop fighting so much in the area of artists and musicians and creators who actually depend upon copyright and put more attention to the scientist who doesn't need copyright but where copyright is blocking the ability of them to get their work distributed. Second, to be more strategic, to pick the fights and to, and to pick the things we are pick, uh, arguing for that actually have a good chance to win. Uh, and number three, to recognize that there's an underlying corruption in many democracies across the world, and I talked about my own, that's going to make it extremely hard to win these fights until we address that underlying corruption. Because recently you talked about switching your focus to this uh, corruption problem. Do you think it's st still uh, linked to uh, the same lobbying problem we have with uh, fighting for digital freedom? Is, is, it, is it, it is linked, really, uh, or not? Yeah, of course it's directly linked. Um, and all the fights that we're seeing right now are really fights between different uh, ways of organizing um, creativity, different ways of organizing commerce. and. Uh, uh, I'm someone who believes that it's important that the copyright system uh, give return, reward to artists, but I believe we need to do that in a fundamentally different way. So rather than fighting about trying to preserve a system designed for printing presses uh, in the digital age, we need to update copyright to make it conform to the digital technologies, but still deliver to the artist the reward the artist needs. So we're talking Creative Commons and we're talking uh, updates on this license. Are we talking also uh, about new ways of uh, licensing uh, copyrights? Well, Creative Commons was meant as a hack to the existing system. And it wanted, it, its intent was to give authors a chance to signal the freedoms they want their creative work to, to carry. But we never believed that Creative Commons was the end to reform. Um, uh, no, I think that we need changes in the underlying law um, to, uh, to refocus the law on the kind of activities that it's important for the law to regulate and to set free from regulation the kind of activities that no free society should ever purport to regulate. So I think we need to make sure that we have a way to reward artists, but we should not be locking up people for engaging in remixing of music or to making commentary or sharing their creative work in the context of the internet. That's the whole point, finding the balance between uh, creativity, uh, rewarding for creativity, and internet freedom. Uh, and many, uh, many even on, on the EFF or open rights groups or other organizations are not in agreement uh, with all the strategy. So how can we uh, fight with these uh, uh, strategies? How can we organize ourselves with these contradictions? Well, I don't, I, 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 it's certainly true that there's lots of disagreement. Um, uh, but I, I think that you know, there is a kind of fundamental agreement that the architecture of copyright law, um, which triggers its application on the production of a, quote, copy, um, makes no sense in a world where copying is as uh, common as breathing. Um, you know, in the old days, before the internet, um, you could go through your whole life never once triggering the application of copyright while still being a rich citizen, um, rich in access to culture. You know, when you read a book, you don't make a copy of the book. Your freedom to read a book is not a fair use right. It doesn't trigger copyright because it doesn't make a copy. And the point is, once you move these same activities into the internet, activities which before the internet were unregulated by the law, now simply because they involve making a copy, is regulated by the law. I think everybody should be able to agree that that doesn't make sense. And what we need to do is to figure a new architecture for copyright that achieves what copyright needs to achieve, rewarding artists, without turning every single activity into an activity that requires a license um, or turns everybody into a pirate because they don't have a license. Just next week, uh, ACTA is going to be decided in the EU. Uh, the British reporter is pressing for delaying 
uh, this uh, rejection, or we be guessing it's going to be re rejection, uh, what can we do as citizens or organizations uh, to fight this, uh, these bills? I think you should be fighting ACTA just like we fought PIPA and SOPA in the United States. Did we learn something out of these campaigns? Is there a strategy we have now? Yeah, I think we did. I think we demonstrated that if you have a wide range of coalition partners, you know, from businesses to nonprofit organizations to citizens, both on the left and the right, who organize these blackout campaigns um, and really put pressure on uh, uh, the governments in response to the way people uh, um, uh, react to these blackout campaigns, you can achieve something. Um, and so I think if you can frame the issue in a clear, simple way, which is what happened with the SOPA PIPA battle, um, you can inspire an enormous reaction from the outsiders inside the system, and I think that's what we're trying to do. So, f final question. Um, you're going back uh, to, to the U.S. What's, uh, what's your next move? Uh, because lots of talk about you've been, a lot of, lot of people have pressured you to, to, to even run for, for Congress, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, what's your, your next strategy as as yourself, what's, are you going to continue, uh, obviously, your fight, but is there something in particular you want to talk about? Well, yeah, I'm not running for Congress. Um, uh, I mean, I, you know, I've, I've made it very clear, I promise yeah, yeah. I'm not, because I think it's important that people not confuse a reform activity with, you know, a stepping stone into government. So I'm never going to uh, become a congressman or a senator. Um, but, uh, you know, we, there's an, a very important coalition of uh, groups that are pushing hard to bring about the kind of reform we're talking about. So I'm, you know, doing my work inside of, inside of those organizations. In a certain sense, that's harder than running for Congress, because if you're running for Congress, there's a beginning and a middle and an end, you know, and at the end, the election day, it's either decided you're in or you're out. This fight, which has now been going on for me for four years, just, you know, has no end in sight. So it's freedom, yes. It's, that's right. So, so, um, so I'll be in this for a long time. Okay, thank you so much for talking to us at the end of the Open White uh, Group Conference. This was Mark Bartow for Vision on TV reporting for Channel Plug and Play. Thank you for watching.